Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back. So, welcome to my guide video for Tower of Chaos. I finally decided to do this and kind of put together all the clips of my Tower of Chaos. Um, this, I guess this will be my official guide until they actually make an update for Tower of Chaos. Now, what I have behind me is a sped up clip of all the bosses that um, I did for Tower of Chaos. As you can see, for the earlier stages, there really isn't too much strategy. It's basically just me nuking. After I finish all the explaining all the boss fights, um, I will be putting on a little clip. Well, not a little clip, but basically the whole entire run of Tower of Chaos also sped up a few times. So you guys can take a look at my whole entire run through Tower of Chaos and the teams I've used. Now, most of my monsters are very, very strong. They do have very, very strong gems like, um, you know, Siphon for, for my Vic and Jin. Actually, this whole entire team that you're seeing right now has Siphon. And I'm using this to clear through the earlier stages of Tower of Chaos. There isn't really too much strategy here. If you're unable to clear this, you basically need to go and you need to level your monsters up and make sure they're stronger. Make sure they're, um, you know, at least 5 stars max level. I think if you're at the point where you're consistently farming B7 and B8, you should be able to clear through these stages no problem. Um, if you're not at this point, then I don't really think Tower of Chaos is worth investing because you, you're better off um, building your golems teams, getting better gems, and eventually you will progress to the point where you'll be able to clear through these stages very, very easily. Now, most of the stages, um, you know, early on, even the even the stages without bosses don't really take too much strategy. Uh, with the and then once once you start getting to the boss where there's a fire cura, um, things will become a little bit more complicated. So right now, I'm just using my team, I'm nuking through all the early bosses until I get to the Fire Cura, which actually requires a little bit of strategy, a little bit of switching up my team. Um, I'm no longer able to just use a random team to, to clear through everything. Now, if you have some light dark monsters, like if you have a light Vic, um, monsters like Dark Miho or, or Dark Seastar, who, are, who were um, aggressor rebirth monsters before, they're very, very good picks for, for helping you get through most of the stages because they're element neutral, meaning that they, they're not weak against any certain element. Um, so you can actually use them for most stages as long as you have them gemmed up very, very well. If you have some other light dark monsters from Rebirth, like the Phibians, which are on this month, um, or if you have the Coco or whatever, um, they're also very, very good monsters to use for most of these stages. Now, I think maybe this uh, this this Pebble stage could be a little bit hard. The, the boss is a little bit tankier. But basically, this is not nothing you really can't do if you just put in a healer, put in some damage dealers, and basically just uh, keep nuking his face until he's dead. Um, really, if you have a B8 team, this stage should be very, very rel relatively easy. Um, you really shouldn't have too much problem. The first problem that you will actually come across is actually the Fire Cura stage. Um, which you will be seeing very very soon. So over here, I'm switching up my fire my my team for fire cure stage. I'm putting in a dark Gatito and a dark Thor. Now there's actually two strategies to clear through this stage. Um, one you can use the st strategy I'm using now, which is basically to armor break her and kill her really really fast, and um, you know basically just um, kill her so she doesn't get her get her shield up. Now I actually screwed up during this fight. And um, she actually got her shield up, which wasted a few turns, but I basically had to wait till her shield wore off and I armor break her and kill her um, again. So, you know, just because my Gatito wasn't able to completely one shot her straight from 100 to 0. Now, the other strategy is to raise a monster with shield break so you can actually break her shield and just kill her um, and damage her every single turn. Now, there's a few monsters that are very good for that um, Water Coteen, Dark Cosmo, which is fusible, um, Water Coteen's farmable. Um, I think really only those two are worth raising. Water July kind of works, but she's not really worth using too much. Um, over here I actually forgot to switch out, or forgot to start the auto, but I'm also using the same team for, oh, actually I'm not using the same team. I switched out my team for this stage. Now this stage has Wood Monas and it has this uh, very, very annoying um, Wood, uh, I think it was a Wood Cura that you had to you had to kill very very fast. So over here I brought my Thor and I brought two Dark Gatitos. Now if you don't have two nukers, you don't really need to. Um, if you have some fire nukers, they're very very good. As long as they're able to survive the water Phibians on the actual stage. I decided to show all the stages so you can actually see the monsters of the stage as well. Um, 
all TLC bosses are, I'm not, I'm not sure all, but most TLC bosses are stunnable. So as you can see here, I'm, I can stun her and I can uh, you know, try to armor break and nuke her and kill her really, really fast. I think with just one nuker, you should still be able to kill her. Um, you can put in a stun, a CC monster, someone with stun, a nuker, and an armor breaker, and one healer to make sure that you survive. Um, so over here, I... For, for this stage, um, I basically decided to auto it. This is my team that I've been using to auto a lot of stages in Tower of Chaos. If you watch the clip afterwards of me running through the whole entire Tower of Chaos, you will see that um, a lot of stages I've been using this Dark July plus 3 Dark Sea Star team. Now, um, I think the best teams for autoing Tower of Chaos is just a full aggressor comp. Basically, just use a, a lot of aggressors, stack them together, and um, you will be able to clear through most of Tower of Chaos relatively easily on auto. Now this stage is most, mostly a damage test. Um, I didn't really use any debuffs on this stage because he has very, very high resistance. All, I think nearly max resistance. So you can't really rely on trying to debuff him or trying to stun him. Basically you just have to sustain and do damage and make sure you're able to um, to kill the kill the Shiva in time before he he stacks too much, too many saps, or you're not able to um, out out heal his damage because he does get blessing and he does get stronger. Oh, actually, wait, no, I'm, I'm not sure if he gets blessing, but um, just basically, you just want to have a good balance of DPS, a good balance of sustain to clear through that stage. Now, for this stage, um, this is a very very annoying stage. The stage on the this stage basically you need to have a sapper. I decided to gem up my wood Persephone, who is only evil one and level fifty, um, but she actually still works very very well on this stage. I basically built her just really really tanky to make sure she survives. Um, over here, the strategy is basically I decided to use my two dark monas since they are dark. The Julys will target them. And since they, they're dark, they also have elemental advantage against the Jellies. So I decided to use my two Dark Monas to um, damage the Jellies and just kill them really fast. Because I really don't want, want my Wood Purse to be sealed. And um, over here, we're just very, very slowing, slowly wearing down the, the Light Odin, who's healing every single turn. Now, the strategy here is you actually want your damage dealers to die. And once they are actually dead... Um, she heals for less because her heal is based off the number of en enemies that she's hitting. So if she's healing for 40 enemy, four enemies, she's going to be healing for 40% of her max HP every single time. If there's only two people alive, she's only going to be healing for 20%. So basically, um, I just let her kill my Dark Monos who's built, who are built on full, full glass cannon. So they will die faster. And over here, I just basically keep stacking saps on her. And since I only have two units alive, if she actually does heal, she's only going to be healing for 20% of her health. So over here, I put in put on um, some heal to make sure my, my units don't die. And I continue stacking saps on her. And she keeps hitting me. I keep sapping her. She keeps hitting me again. Throw, throw some more saps. And she should die very, very soon. So that's bas basically the strategy for floor 55. Um, you basically just want a sapper that's built full tanky, a full nukers, and the rest should be very, very easy. Now for this stage, I decided to go with two nukers again. Um, you can go with one, one CC monster, one nuker, but I think two nukers is more of a, a more of a reliable strategy because sometimes you can resist your stuns. And you basically need to stun her twice in a row in order to actually kill her. Because the Light Succubus also has the healing skill, um, same skill as the Light Odin. Um, she heals based on the number of enemies that she's hitting. So over here, um, I basically just use my Dark Dark Thor and two Dark Gatitos. Kind of manual the stage because um, you know I'm using nukers and armor breakers. And I'm using single target nukers, so putting them on full auto might mess up my runs. So I decided to just manual it. Um, it's actually a little bit faster if I manual it as well. So over here, I just kill them. Now this place is really straightforward. I basically I ar armor breaker, or I try to armor breaker. Um, I waited one turn to get make sure my Dark Gatito has full bars, and once they have full bars, I armor break and kill her in one turn. So this is yeah, that, that, was, that was basically it for floor 60. Now this is floor 65. Um, this is just. This stage is very straightforward. There's actually really no strategy involved here. Um, the boss is really, really squishy. Basically, you don't. He doesn't even have any sort of like threatening skills or heals or anything like that. So as long as you armor break and nuke him, um, and also if you have some CC, that would be nice, and also some sustain, um, you can clear through the stage relatively easily. 
Now, if you don't have a Dark Gatito, I think you can use some other nukers, but um, they will have to be different elements depending on the boss element. So if the boss is like, like, because most of these stages are light dark monsters, so you can actually use any element nukers to nuke through them. Like if you have a water Valk or something, um, you can use that. You can armor break and use the water Valk as DPS to to kill the bosses. Um, so it really depends on what monsters you have. So here I armor broke him and uh, we just put on some damage and he basically died in two turns. So this here is the last stage, uh, this is 470. Now over here I decided to use a shield um, monster because the they're, they're actually quite annoying. Um, over here my Gatito almost died, but fortunately they didn't hit my Gatito again. So I was able to... Um, you know, one shot him. I actually had very, very bad RNG in the first turn. I, I didn't manage to stun them, so that that's why they did so much damage to my Gatito. Now, the reason I put a shield monster here is because um, I basically wanted the shield to protect my nukers. You can also use a, a defense buff healer. I think that also works as well. Um, basically, it's to protect my Gatito because the, the level of this... Um, this stage is actually relatively high. My Gatito is built full glass cannon, so if they do actually, you know, focus him, um, or if he takes too much damage, then he can die really, really easily. So over here, I decided to just use my Light Siren, who is basically a shield healer that can get her shield up really, really fast, and just to use that to protect my my Dark Gatito. Now, the important thing here, I think, is to have an armor break and also have a stun. Um, stunning this boss is really, really nice because if you stun him, he's not able to heal. So over here, I stun him. He basically wasted a turn. Um, I'm, I'm trying to armor break him, trying to stun him. Now he did his AoE nuke, which did quite a lot of damage, um, but it, it's not enough damage to kill my nuker. So over here, I put on my shield, so he's not going to be doing too much damage. Um, I try to stun him, put on some damage again, and I stunned him again. So that's that's quite nice. And I finally land the armor break and was able to kill him. So. Basically, if you have a stun, an armor break, and a nuker, you can clear through um, all the stages of uh, Tower of Chaos, except for the stage with uh, with a Light Odin. You will actually need a Sapper for that. So over here, uh, if we continue on, it's basically my whole entire run of Tower of Chaos sped up about three or four times. And over here, if you have a you have if you have questions on um, how I did any of the stages. You can, you can take a look at the video or you can see how I'm actually running through the stages. Um, yeah, that is that is pretty much it. That is just the general general um, guide to Tower of Chaos. It's, a, it's very, very... Uh, it's pretty straightforward. Basically, you just need a stun, an armor break, and a nuke, and a heal, and you can pretty much clear through every single stage or every single boss stage of um, Tower of Chaos. Anyways, I'm going to be leaving you guys here, and you guys can take a look at the rest of the run. If you need any help, you can skip through, skip forward, and take a look at um, any of the stages. I have all the stages. My whole entire run is recorded here, so you can take a look at, at that. Anyways, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. It took me quite a, long, quite a while to uh, cut all the parts and edit in a little bit, um, so hopefully you guys appreciate the effort. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.
You won't.